Hello, Finland. We need an awakening blaze in Finland. Good morning, Geraldine. Thank you. And Astrid for the chocolate. And out. Hello, Sweden. Taiwan. Awakeningblaze.com. Come on, let's burn this demonic resistance up in prayer. Awakeningblaze.com prayer movement. Tulsa Blaze, Shell Russ, good to see you. New Zealand. Nicole Brannigan, good to see you. Cecil, John Broderick, good morning. Maggie from London, good morning. Rhonda Joy Valley, good morning. Tiffany Ashing, looking forward to seeing you. Texarkana. Indiana, Netherlands, Pittsburgh, the Bronx, come on, India, good morning, awakeningblaze.com, I'm looking for some real intercessors who can run with me, real ones, not the kind that faint when the devil says boo, I mean real ones, interested in seeing change, God's hand move, revival, awakeningblaze.com, join the movement, Northern Ireland, good morning, Dallas, Texas, Charlotte, Atlanta. I'm coming back to Atlanta, end of April. I have to update my itinerary. New Jersey, good morning. Come near, O burning one. Yeah, getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. Share this with your friends. Invite your followers. Let's roll. Share, invite, crank it up. We'll start when we hit a certain mark. Want to make sure everybody's on. Don't want to miss this morning. Madrid, Spain, help me out. Awakeningblaze.com. We need an Awakening Blaze in Madrid. I've always wanted to go to Madrid. Shakatabrakatarabashtikitibrishti. Get ready, get ready. <laughs> Irony. California, it's early there. All right, let's hit the go button. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, author of our devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. Senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida, founder of the Awakening Blaze Prayer Movement, shaking the nations with a Book of Acts prayer movement. Let's start rolling today's devotion titled, All is Not Lost. All is Not Lost. Here's what I heard the Lord say. All is not lost. I know it may look as if all is lost, as if you have to start over again. But don't buy into the enemy's drama and hype. Don't be fooled by what you see, says God. As long as you have Jesus, all is not lost. And you have Jesus. If the devil has trespassed, he will have to repay whatever he stole from you. So don't continue to focus on what he is doing. Focus on what God has done and what he wants to do, says the Lord. He is your deliverer, says the Spirit of God. He is your restorer, says the Spirit of grace. He is your peace. He is with you. All is not lost. Come on, capital letters, shout it out. All is not lost. 
As long, just like Catherine Coleman used to say, as long as God is still on the throne and hears and answers prayer, <laughs> there's hope. Today's scripture references 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, Joel 2 and 25, and 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And the prayer starter for today, help me walk by faith and not by sight. What I see around me often looks like loss, but I know you are a God of restoration. I choose this day to keep my eyes on your power, your glory, and your grace. I trust you to restore all that was lost. In God, nothing is ever lost. Whatever we give to him, he gives it back to us. Whatever the enemy steals, he gives it back to us. Whatever we sacrifice on his altar, he gives back to us. More, better, new. Dry bones live. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that you're good, (laughs) that you're gracious, that you're merciful, that you're long-suffering, God. We thank you that you are with us, that you will never leave us or forsake us, that you will never relax your hold upon us. You've got us firmly in your hand, tightly in your grip. You're never going to let us go. And we're never going to let you, God. We hold on tight because this is a wild ride. This This is a wild adventure. And some of you feel like you've been on a roller coaster and it's not fun you don't like roller coasters I don't know about you I don't like roller coasters I don't like going up and down I don't like going upside down I don't like spinning in circles wildly I don't like it but some of you some of you have been on this emotional roller coaster and there's been ups and there's been downs the Lord shows me there's been ups and there's been downs there's been free falls there's been times when you felt like you're just absolutely out of control but the Lord would say to you today let go let me be in control stop trying so hard to control everything and your emotions will stabilize stop trying so hard to keep your hand on the reins and give me the reins says the Lord because I am the one I am the one who makes you even and makes you steady and makes you stable I am the one who shows you, who walks you, who leads you, who guides you beside the still waters, beside the green pastures. I thank you, Lord, that you'll make us to lie down in those green pastures. You will still our souls. I just see, I just keep seeing this picture of a a roller coaster and it is twisting and turning and, and this is representing the emotions of so many people. There's an instability going on. Some of it is because of something inside of you that needs to be healed, that needs to be fixed. Some of you is because of the people around you that are bringing drama, 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 and they've sucked you in to their drama to the point that you yourself begin to feel like a yo-yo. You yourself begin to feel like you're on a roller coaster because you've tapped in to their emotions because they're overshadowing you, they're overcoming you, they're spewing it all over you. Some of you, it's just your own circumstances and you don't know how to deal. You don't know how to tap into the wisdom of God. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to pray as you ought. But the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit is the answer to A, B, and C. The Holy Spirit is the answer to one, two, and three. The Holy Spirit is all of the above. He is the answer. So, Father, help us this morning to find the stability. I just see some somebody, it's like you were on that emotional roller coaster, and it just went off the tracks, and now you're in danger of losing things. You're in danger of harm. I just break every enemy assignment against your emotions. Those vain imaginations that continue to plague your mind. Those things that are ungodly. Those fears. Those reasonings. Those imaginations. Those, 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 uh, it's just like a barrage. Ah, thoughts, 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 thoughts. And it's sometimes you just feel like you're going crazy. You just feel like you can't go on another moment. It's just overwhelming. I break overwhelm in the name of the Lord. We come against the vain imaginations. We come against the demonic what ifs we come against the fear and the loathing I just heard the word say loathing some of you are, are you're in loathing I, it's like almost like you're loathing your life you're loathing your existence you're loathing your job you're loathing some people around you I, don't, I have to even go look up the full definition of loathing to see how intense that word is but it's like a loathing it's like let me just look it up now it's like a loathing father help us today help us today and understand what you're saying to us God there's a loathing going on a loathing some of you are just I just see you're loathing your circumstances you're loathing your life you're loathing some people around you there's just a there's just a loathing going on and it's not healthy it's toxic it's causing great emotional turmoil in your life loathing what does this mean Lord extreme disgust detestation a loathing 
a loathing, a loathing. What else does it mean? Loathing, loathing. Come on, let's get clarity on what the Holy Spirit is saying. This seems to be a serious issue. A loathing, a loathing. A strong dislike or disgust, an intense diversion. Yes, some of you are disgusted with the way things have gone in your life. Some of you are loathing your workplace, loathing people around you, just held, holding them in disdain, just can't stand to be around them anymore. God, help us to discern what we're to do in these situations, God. Is this something that you're, that you're, that you're, uh, is, uh, how do we use this for your glory, God? I just, it's just like flashing big capital letters I see. Right now in the spirit, loathing, loathing, loathing. We, somebody needs to get delivered from loathing today and move into loving. Because loathing is not the will of the Lord for your life. To walk around loathing. You're supposed to walk around loving. You're, you're not supposed to, 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 to be overcome by loathing. You're supposed to be overcome by loving. It's this disgust. It's like, uh, it's one thing to have a disgust for the devil. Uh, even to have a disgust for your circumstances can be okay if it motivates change. But we must separate the people from the problems. We must separate the principalities from the personality. So be careful in your loathing. You were supposed to hate what God hates. But we're supposed to love what God loves. So be careful in your loathing. If you're disgusted with things in your life, change them. But be careful not to loathe the people, but just to loathe the problems, to fix the problems, to move, to make the chick. Come on. Somebody just needs to make some changes. Get out of the loathing and get into the loving. Get out of the loathing and get into the, I don't know what the word is, but just make some changes, would you? If you don't like your life the way that it is change it if you don't like your life if you don't like your job if you don't like where you live if you don't like your friends if you don't like your church then change it you have the power to change it be very careful not to walk in loathing because it can lead you long term into a situation of bitterness a temporary loathing, a temporary disgust can be something that motivates you to change your circumstances. If you loathe your job, find a new one. If you loathe your church, find a new one. But to stay in a consistent state of loathing will take you out of a love walk and into all sorts of lewdness, ludicrous thoughts, all sorts of, of issues in your soul. Long-term loathing is not the state you want to live in. Lord, let, let our disgust, let our loathing of our circumstances press us to pray. Pray. Let our loathing of our circumstances, of even, even of our workplace, if, if we're loathing, let it, let it spur us into intercession, spur us. And there's somebody listening to the sound of my voice right now, and you, you, see, you just seem to think that you're the one that's going to change it. You can change your circumstances, but you can't change other people. Some of you are in a church right now, and you, and you say, oh, the Lord has commanded me to stay. You think you're the one, the Savior. I'm, I'm, this is going to offend you. I'm sorry. But maybe it'll set you free. Offense is the first step to your deliverance. You just think you've been sitting there two, three, four years in this church praying that the pastor would get it, praying for the control to stop, praying for the Jezebelic influence to be broken, and it's not going to happen. Leave. Get to stepping. Grab your purse, honey, and walk out the door. Because you're not the savior of that place. Jesus is. You can pray from outside as well as you can pray from the inside of that church. You can pray from the outside of that church. You can go in another church and get fed and get refilled and get, come on now. No one's telling you not to pray for the church, but dear God, if you're dying on the vine and the church is shriveling up and you don't learn a thing and you're in constant warfare and you just don't feel like you can take it anymore, but you said, God commanded me to stay. Guess what, honey? The devil has deceived you. God has not called you to stay there year after year after year after year after year and you loathe it. You don't even want to go, but you feel this false burden. The enemy just puts you in bondage there. You can pray for that church from the outside. You don't have to be there to pray them through. Get out, get some freedom, get some refreshing. Dear God, would you help me? No one's telling you to stop praying for the pastor, but do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Yeah, there's times the Lord will tell you to stick around for a season. But in all my years of walking with the Lord, I have yet to find one person who has told me, yeah, I, I stayed those 20 years to pray them through and they broke through. No, usually that intercessor is broken down. Usually that intercessor is overtaken. Usually that intercessor comes up under the spirit that's on the house because they refuse to get out when they had a choice and a warning from the Holy Spirit. What you sit under, 
will overtake you. The deception that you sit under will overtake you. The anointing that you sit under will trickle down on your head. It's a spiritual principle. The anointing flows from the head. And if the anointing is demonic, if the wisdom is devilish, if the spirit is off and you sit under it long term, it's going to overtake you. Get out. I don't know who, what intercessor I'm talking to. You're probably mad at me right now, but go pray. Go think about it. Let this shock system here, let this shock value here get you to take another look. God, encounter the hearts of the intercessors. Lord, help those ones, God, that are in a church and they feel obligated because grandmommy's and pop pop's name is written on the side of the church. Great great grandma put down the foundation stone. Don't feel obligated. It's the spirit of religion that obligates you. You are only obligated to the spirit of God, but do not be deceived. The devil comes as an angel of light to keep you in bondage. If everybody would leave these Jezebelic churches, those Jezebelic churches would shut down and maybe these Jezebelic leaders would get some deliverance. Ah! Sheke tim rashta katarabashti. Oh, if you loathe your church, ask the Lord why. Is it you? Do you have a devil that needs to be cast out? You got some issues? You got a problem? You don't know how to fight warfare? Are you just disrespectful and dishonorable? Or is it the pastor? Is it the leadership? Is it the Jezebel on the worship team that's targeted you for destruction? If you loathe your workplace, ask the Lord. Is this my heart? Am I haughty? Am I mad because I didn't get that promotion and I didn't deserve it, but I thought I should have it, but I didn't deserve it, but I thought I should have it, but I didn't deserve it, but I thought I should have it. Now I loathe everyone around me. Is it my issue or is the boss just never going to see my gifts and talents? Am I being discriminated against because I'm a Christian? Am I supposed to just leave? Is there a better opportunity for me? Lord, are you allowing this to squeeze me out because you've got a higher paying job in another place that will appreciate me? Let your loathing motivate you to examine your situation. If it's your heart, get it straight, honey. If the Lord is using this feeling of disgust to push you out of a place that you should have left a long time ago, then follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. Follow the Lord, Jesus. Follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. Your emotions will deceive you. Never make a decision by emotions alone. I have such a hard time making decisions around people because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but then I also have the fear of the Lord. Lord, are we, are we supposed to extend more and more grace? How much grace do we need to extend? Do we need to extend it for six months, a year, five years? How, how long do we have to just watch somebody before we rebuke them, before we confront them, before we replace them. How long? But there comes a time. Examine the fruit. Listen to me. Examine the fruit. Would you hear my voice? Examine the fruit. Oh, come on, open your spiritual ears. Examine the fruit. Jesus came, and there was no figs on the, on the tree. And he cursed the fig tree. In one of the parables, there was, no, there, was no, there was no figs. There was no fruit. And they came back for another season. They gave it another season to grow. But then when it didn't grow that time, that was it. There's a season to allow people to grow. There's a season to allow things to change in your workplace. There's a season to allow for, for God to move and change things in your church. There's a season for God to move and change things with your children. But there comes a time when the fruit is rotten and toxic and it's poisoning your body. The stress that it's causing you is just not even worth it. It's holding back your life. It's holding back your ministry. Look at the fruit of your relationships. Look at it. Look at the fruit of your, your workplace. Look at the fruit of your employees. Look at the fruit of those people that you run with. Everybody has bad days and even bad seasons, but if it's consistently toxic, if it's consistently rotten, if it's consistently strife, if it's consistently, come on. Look at the fruit. It's not just false prophets you'll know by their fruit. Examine the fruit. Example, here's, here's, listen, listen. 
Examine the fruit of your own life first. We're not, we're not called to be judges. God is the judge. But we are called to make a righteous judgment. But it should start in your own heart. That's why I have such a hard time making decisions, big decisions that affect people's lives because I don't want my short-term frustration to cause a long-term problem. But when it becomes a long-term problem, you need to find a short-term solution because it will destroy you. Drama, drama, stress, stress, overwhelm. Look at the fruit, look at the fruit, look at the fruit, look at the fruit, look at the fruit. But start in your heart. Are you just impatient? Are you just too easily offended? Are you just touchy? Are you just consumed with some kind of fear that just won't let you settle down, settle in? Are you just judgmental? you just critical? You just want to pick on everybody? Nothing's ever good enough for you? If you bounce from place to place to place to place, that's probably your issue. If you can never be satisfied in any job, in any relationship, in any church, that's probably your issue. But if you've given it all you've got, and you've given it chance after chance after chance after chance after chance, and there's no change and it's killing you, that's bad fruit. That's bad fruit. Examine the fruit, but always start with yourself. Have enough fear of the Lord not to just quit a job with no notice. Have enough fear of the Lord not just to leave a church for the wrong reason. Have enough fear of the Lord. Come on, where's the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to you wanna make a right decision with your life? You want to make a right decision in your circumstances? Start with the fear of the Lord. Start with the fear. Lord, give us the spirit of the fear of the Lord again. Let it fall in your church again, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us wisdom, God. Help us to examine our hearts to see if there be any wicked way in us. Lord, if, if we're the ones causing the problem in somebody else's life and we're just oblivious, open the eyes of our heart and help us see the hard truth about ourselves so that we might repent, that we might change the way that we think. Or we don't want to be a thorn in somebody else's side, God. We don't want to be a thorn in somebody else's side, God. We don't want to be a hindrance to somebody else's walk. We don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody around us, God. We don't want to be that. Help us, Lord. We don't want to be that. We don't want to be a snare. Lord, we want to, we want to, we want to, Bring joy and peace and release the kingdom all the way around us. But Lord, if the enemy is taking advantage, help us to see and help us to take this, the actions that we need to take to make a, I just heard the Lord say, a course correction that some of you need to make a, listen, a course correction. You need to make a course correction. Father, help us to make a course correction. A course, because some, listen, some of you are leaning too far to the right. You're leaning too far on the side of grace. You're just letting people walk all over. You're just, you're just, you're just waiting, 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 waiting to make a change, hoping it gets better, hoping it gets better, hoping it gets better, hoping it gets better. And you're loathing. And some of you have, have your course correction you need because your, 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 your wheel is spinning over too far to the left. You're judgmental. You're critical. You're too quick to want to cut things off. Don't get mad at me now. I'm trying to help you. You're impatient. You just don't have any grace. You want it the way you want it done. You want it done now and you're not willing to wait. You want everything perfect. You're, you are a perfectionist. It's almost legalistic. We need to drive down the middle of the road. Hashtag course correction. Lord, let us see the truth about ourselves before we're willing to point the truth out about everybody else. Let us not be those that point fingers and says, well, this one needs to change this, and that one needs to change this, and this one needs... Let us look first at ourselves and say, Lord, what is my course correction? Am I not assertive enough? Am I not quick enough to address issues? Am I too quick to address issues? Am I too assertive? Lord, we seek your balance. We seek your balance. Lord, we want to... <laughs> we want to walk with you. We want to talk. We want to be distracted by things you've not called us to walk in and through. Lord, life is too short. There's too much work to do in your kingdom. There's too much of an impact to make 
to be twirled up in drama spirals and swirls all the time. Help us, Lord, to balance our lives, God. Some of you work too hard. Some of you don't work hard enough. Some of you have too much ambition. Some of you don't have enough. Some of you have, come on, are you getting it? Balance, God, help us to walk in balance. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, Amplified Translation, the enemy comes like a roaming lion, like a roaring lion. The enemy roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, the Bible says we're to be temperate and stable, well-balanced in all of our ways. Because it's that out of balance, it's that place where we get out of balance, it's that place where we get off of the middle of the road, it's that place where we're off to the right or off to the left, in this ditch you're in, that that is where the enemy attacks. Listen, the enemy doesn't walk the straight and narrow, saints. The enemy doesn't walk down the middle of the road, the enemy walks in extremes and in excess. The enemy doesn't walk down the middle of the road, that's where we need to walk. The enemy doesn't, listen, listen to me, the enemy doesn't walk down the narrow path. The enemy walks on the fringes. So help us, Lord, to stay on the course, to follow you, You knowing that that doesn't mean that we'll never have an enemy attack, but that when we do, we're walking so closely with you that we'll get a heads up when we do. We're walking so closely with you that we'll get the battle strategy. If we do, we'll understand and know and have the confidence to take out that enemy quickly like Paul did, like Peter did, like Jesus did, like David did. Come on. Help us to walk in balance because that's where the victory is. Help us to walk in love because that's where the authority is. Help us to walk in power because that's where the miracles are. You know, as Christians, we must be willing to... The Bible says over and over, examine your heart. I guess these last two weeks have been a lot of sort of pressing into the hard truth. We must grow. And if there, are, if, if there are weeds in our life that are hindering our growth, we must remove them. We must remove the, the wrong attitudes, the wrong mindsets. We must remove those things. Jesus is the vine dresser. Actually, so we must allow him to remove those things. But we must yield to him. We must give it over to him. We must agree with him. He is the pruner. He's the vine dresser. He wants to prune us so we can grow. So we have to get... I'm not talking about navel gazing or always being so introspective that you're seeing something wrong with you when there's nothing wrong with you. The enemy can easily turn that off into condemnation. The enemy can easily turn that off into unworthiness and guilt. Easily. But it's just being willing. When you're, when you're facing a situation, you're like, this is not the will of the Lord. It's not the will of the Lord, that, that this, this, this church long term, this, this job, these friends, whatever it is, and you discern the fruit is bad. Examine your own heart first. How did you get into this bad church? How did you get into this bad relationship? Why weren't you willing to move and change it earlier? How, you, you have to take, listen, You have to take responsibility for where you are to a large extent. You might not have done all the things that put you where you are. Maybe somebody abandoned you. Maybe somebody ripped you off. That's not your fault. But you you were the one that connected with that person in the first place. You were the one that married them. You were the one that went to that church that burned you. You were the one that bar- let somebody borrow money who didn't pay back. You you did that. You didn't make them do their part, but you but you did something. So when I say take responsibility, I don't want you to get offended. You're the one that hired those employees that, that, are, that are ruining your business now. You're the one that, you know, you're the, you made certain decisions. You're the one that invested that money in the stock market and it went bust. You're the one that did that. You didn't make the stock market bust, but you're the one that put the money there. Well, don't nobody like what I'm saying now. You're the one that did those things. You're the one that did those things. You're the one that did those things. So you have to take responsibility. You have to say, Lord, 
I repent for my part. What they did to me was wrong. What happened to me was not just. But I take responsibility for my decisions because maybe I got out ahead of you. Maybe I lagged behind you. Maybe I didn't seek your wisdom. So when I say you're responsible, I don't mean you're responsible for the guy that cheated on you, but you're the one that hooked up with him. So ask the Lord, how did I get myself into this mess? And why have I put up with it for so long? Are you a people pleaser? Are you, are you, you know, why? And these are the rules that I live by. Because we can never see lasting change in our life if we're always blaming other people and never willing to look and say, how did I get in? Why have, I, why have the last three relationships I've been in all fallen apart? Am I not discerning? Am I just not getting it? What can I learn? Learn from, learn from these situations because that's where you'll grow. Learn. There's nothing wasted if you learn from it. Listen. And there's no shame. There's nothing in, there's nothing, there's nothing. <laughs> just learn from it. Take the time to think. Amen. God is good. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity to sow today. Some of y'all are shocked and amazed. Like, what, what? But I want to give you an opportunity to sow, and I want to share with you a little bit. You know, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful, cheerful, cheerful giver. If you're not a cheerful giver, you need, to, you need to look at your heart on that too because the Bible says God loves a cheer. He expects us to be happy about giving. Did you know that? I know many of you need hard truth. I get emails and messages all the time saying, thank you for being willing to say what my pastor won't because my pastor is too scared that I'll leave the church if he confronts me. My pastor is too concerned that my tithe might go somewhere else if, I, if he tells me what I need to hear so I can grow. God loves you. And there's nothing you'll ever do that will keep him from loving you. He loves you just the way you are, but he wants you to be full of joy and peace. And if you're not, there's a problem. And we need to change it. We need to fix it. Because God wants you to have an abundant life to the full till it overflows. He wants you to walk in peace, love, joy, and contentment all the time, even in warfare. And so if, you're, if, if that's not your life condition, there's something wrong. We want to fix it. I want to help you fix it. There's no condemnation and no shame. We just got to grab hold. But see, here's the thing. God expects you to, he expects you to be happy about giving. And so this, we get to this part of the broadcast and 100 people drop off immediately because they're like, eh. And some people just have to go to work. And, and it doesn't offend me. I'm just saying that they don't, they don't care to give. They've gotten what they want. They've taken what they needed. And they don't intend to give. So they're just going to shut it off now because they have no, even, this takes three minutes, but they don't even want to hear it. They don't want the conviction that the Holy Spirit might bring to their heart that they might need to sow back into something that's, ch that's radically changed their life over these past four years or these past four months. They're not cheerful about giving. I'm always grateful for the opportunity to give. I like to give. Certain people have the gift of giving, but the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And so I challenge you to give with a smile, wherever you give, whenever you give. When you take your tithes and offerings in your church and, and you put it in the plate or you bring it up to the altar, however you do it, smile. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't look like, I see some people at, at Awakening House of Prayer and it's like, you they look like they're going to die. They're like, almost like they, they, they just, uh, they just don't think they can even put one foot in front of the other and they've got a grimace on their face. And then I see others who come and they're dancing and they put their offering in the basket and they're like, hallelujah, they're cheerful givers. Be a che Why should you be cheerful? Why does the Bible, but be, you should be cheerful because you know you're going to get, get a harvest. You should be cheerful because you know that when you sow, you're going to reap more than you sow. That's a good deal. That's like the stock market is unstable, but the kingdom of God is not unstable. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. It's the best investment you'll ever make. So be a cheerful giver today. I challenge you to give. If you've never given anything at all and you're able to, to this broad, through this broadcast, you should do so. Give back where you're being blessed.
I'm saying things to some of you guys your pastors just won't say because they don't want to offend you. I'm not trying to offend you either. I just don't want you to be miserable. I just don't want you to be in financial bondage. I just don't want you to be sick. I don't want you to be unhappy. And so, some, so we pray intimate prayers to the Holy Spirit, ask him to search our hearts. Not every day. Sometimes we go into warfare. Sometimes we just love on God. But you know what? Lately it's been hard truth, and I think that must be what we need. You can go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Jennifer God loves you so much. I know that in the midst of all your self-examination. Jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can become a partner there. You can offer a one-time seed there. Every little bit helps us to go and do what God has called us to do. You can use text to pray. Thank you, Prophet. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. P-R-A-Y. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. You can use the PayPal. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. If you're a PayPal hardcore. Uh, da, 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 P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Yes, I love you guys. That's why I tell you the truth. I Sometimes the stuff that comes out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, boy. But I know I'm being led by the Lord. I, I, I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning praying, thinking, reading, studying the word. I wouldn't be up at 4 and coming on a prayer call for an hour at 6 if I didn't love you guys. It's a labor of love and I love it I love every minute of it this is one of my favorite parts of the whole day first three hours of my day are the best three hours of my day giving a tithe of my time actually more than that because all my time belongs to him but that's what some of you need to do is just start giving more giving him more of your time and let him multiply it back to you amen P.O. Box 30563 Fort Lauderdale, 33303. I think I messed it up the first time. All right, a couple of announcements, and we're going to move on. I don't even know what I'm going to say to you today. I have an inkling. I didn't prepare any kind of teaching. I didn't get any kind of real overwhelming revelation today, but there's something I do want to share about the name of Jesus. I want to remind you that Thursday at... 7 o'clock, interview with Robert Henderson. Healing in the courts of heaven. What's blocking healing? Why do some people not get healed? Are there, are there certain prayers we can pray? Do we need to, to, to legislate in the spirit a little bit? What's going on? Robert Henderson is going to talk about his new book. I'm going to be interviewing him for that. If you can get on that call, get on. I think all the free tickets are gone. Somebody got real nasty with, with us the other day. There's, there's only so many, there's like 700 and something free tickets, and then after that you have to donate. You can just donate a dollar or whatever. It strains our, our, it strains our systems once you get too many, and actually we have to send out the recording, et cetera, et cetera. So, so don't come back and say that all the tickets are gone. It, it does get kind of confusing, but poke around. Poke around. Just don't get nasty with us. Ask a sincere question. Don't get nasty. Don't get nasty. Friday and Saturday, uh, the prophetic power conference with Scott Neri. I'm going to be preaching. Scott's going to be preaching. We're going to be doing activations also. So we're going to do that on Friday and Saturday. Now, that is going to be at the Awakening House of Prayer. So if you're in South Florida, come. I know that Glenn, Apostle Glenn, is going to be with us driving down from Charlotte uh, to be with us and some others from Orlando. And uh, we're doing some, some very interesting things this weekend. So please come out if you're in South Florida. It, we're in Dania Beach. Go to AwakeningHouseOfPrayer.com. Uh, you can sign up for any of these things at Eventbrite if you're coming in person. The Robert Henderson, the Awakening House of Prayer, event, JenniferLeClaire.Eventbrite.com. Uh, if you want to watch this prophetic power conference on live stream, you're going to have to go to ahop.tv. So don't go to Eventbrite because that's not going to get you in. You gotta go to ahop.tv and you'll see that there. Ahop.tv, A H O P dot TV. Amen. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. Our uh, tier two mentoring in prayer and intercession is on Wednesday the 28th. Wednesday the 28th, our prayer mentoring tier two. Wednesday the 28th. I know we just had someone new sign up. 
Uh, for that, there is still two more spaces because some others broke their commitment, they broke their word. Uh, the program, you, you, you have to, in order to qualify for that, you have to agree to, to go in for 12 months because I want to see your life radically changed at that level. I'm not willing to pour my heart into someone who's not willing to stand with me for 12 months to see that transformation. The tier one mentoring in prayer, you can, you can just jump in and out whenever you want. I think it's better if you stay in a while uh, because things, you know, it's, you know, it's just anything you try one time probably ain't going to help you a lot, but when you stick with something, it does. It's the discipline, kind of like working out. You're working out spiritually. So the next tier one mentoring and prayer and intercession call is on the 4th of April. You can sign up for these things at schoolofthespirit.tv. Now, I want to tell you about something that you can finally go do on schoolofthespirit.tv. If you are a writer, you want to get your book published. I have launched a, an official intensive and I've invited two of the premier Christian publishing voices in the world to come and teach with me. We're going to be teaching you how to write in a way that you can actually get your book published. How to, how to, how to, what publishers really want out of a book. How, they can actually, uh, how you can actually get their attention. How to write a proper proposal. How to market your book. How to build your platform so that the publisher will be interested in you and what you're doing. The kind of topics that, that publishers want. And of course, like, again, a lot of stuff on writing, a lot of stuff on writing. This is a three-day intensive. Actually, it's two-day, but there's a Thursday evening mentoring with just me, and I can only take so many people in that. A Thursday evening mentoring, several hours, we, we can talk and, and pray and lay hands on people. But then all day Friday, all day Saturday, this is in July, all day Friday, all day Saturday, and you can see all the details there. There's different levels. Right now, it's on an early bird registration. This is coming at a fee to organize this kind of a team uh, is, uh, is just outstanding. I don't know that anybody's ever done it before. As a matter of fact, I know nobody's done it before with this particular team. Um, it's just uh, outrageous to have these people here together. Uh, Tessie DeVore was responsible for uh, like 20 New York Times bestsellers when she was the publisher at Charisma House, and Larry Sparks is the publisher of Destiny Image. Now, here's the thing. Listen. I have an imprint deal with Destiny Image. So when you come uh, with your book idea, you're going to be able to, through a special email, submit that to me, and I and Larry will go over it and decide how best we can try to get your book published. And this is not one of those scams like you see with these goofy print-on-demand junk online that you just take your money. They charge you thousands of dollars for editing and all these things, and your book never goes anywhere. This is an actual publisher, one of the biggest Christian publishers in the world. So if you're an author and you're serious about this, I invite you to go get in on this while the early bird lasts because it's not going to last long. You can choose for the you can opt for the mentoring, uh, you can opt for the there's several different packages. Please go to the website schoolofthespirit.tv. Schoolofthespirit.tv and scroll down and you're going to see the banner there. Secrets to best secrets every Christ, secrets to best selling that every Christian author should know. You you can take it online. You don't have to do it in person. You can take it online. You can watch it online. So you don't have to fly to South Florida to do this. Um, some of you will want to fly to South Florida to do this. But you don't have to. So I would uh, encourage you to go to schoolofthespirit.tv. No, it's not. A, why don't you go visit the site and you'll see all the details. That way I don't have to labor this long and keep everybody else who might not be interested uh, hanging while I go through every tiny, teeny detail of what's on the site for you to go read. Amen. And go read it. If you have questions, ask those questions through the contact button at the school. It's at the top right-hand corner, all right? I don't want to put everybody else through this. There's a smaller number of you who are interested. It is a mega opportunity. Nothing ever, nothing like this has ever been done before. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to talk about, oh, you know, we're going to teach you how to write, and they don't even know how to write. They have ghostwriters for their books. They're just out there to make a dime. And I hate to say it, but you'll see, even in the Christian market, you'll see those out there that you know, they're like, well, you're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to write your book in this many days and I'm going to teach you how to do that. And it's, it's just, it's not legit. You want to be connected and aligned with professionals in the industry or you will not be considered professional. You can go get your book published at a vanity publisher and, and go sell three copies. 
If you want to be the real deal, hang out with real deal people. Amen? All right, so go to schoolofthespirit.tv. Schoolofthespirit.tv. All right, so really, I want to share with you for just a moment something that concerns me. looking for something here I read uh, an email earlier this morning from the National Day of Repentance founder and he puts out some pretty bold stuff and, and he said something that I've been saying a lot lately and it spurred in me a Bible search this morning in the name of. I was reading in Samuel after Samuel died. David asked Nabal for some provisions for his men. And he asked, he told his, his boys, his men, some of his uh, younger men in the, in, the, in the army, go out and ask Nabal in my name. Make this request in my name, in the name of David. Uh, and it didn't work out too well for him. Nabal refused to give him the provisions he wanted. David uh, got very angry, got in the flesh, and decided he was going to wipe out every male in Naboth's uh, 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 you know, organization. And uh, Nabal's wife, Abigail, came out and did the ultimate act of intercession and took the blame, brought the provision, and uh, the judgment of, and kept David from taking vengeance. See, because the Bible says the battle is the Lord's, and this battle was David's. David got in his flesh, and he did something in his name. He said, go tell Nabal in the name of David. Send him in my name. And any time we do something in our name, we're not going to get results. And I hear uh, to, to what the man of God from the National Day of Repentance was, was opining about this morning. I hear many people that are praying, and they don't pray in the name of Jesus. They're just praying. They're just praying. They're just praying. But it's in the name of Jesus that our prayers carry authority and power. You know, even some preachers today, I don't hear any mention of Jesus. Um, it's just God. Now, we can say God, and I, I don't, I'm not one of these picky ones that say, well, you have to, you know, we don't need to have a critical spirit. But what I'm saying is when we pray, you know, the Bible says if we lift up Jesus, all men will be drawn to him. So we ha he needs to be the center of our conversation. We, we want to talk about the Father. We want to talk about the Son. We want to talk about the Holy Spirit. But there's this trend where people are not mentioning Jesus, and where people are not praying in the name of Jesus. And my beef is specific, or my concern. It's not a beef because I think people are, are, are innocently making this, this error. They're just, I don't know how it's happening. I don't know if we're just not teaching people or what. But we listen, we need to pray in the name above all names. We need to pray in the name at which every knee bows and every tongue confesses. We need to pray in the name of Jesus. You can say Yeshua if you want to say Yeshua. I, you know, it's the same thing. I'm not nitpicking over, you know, if we say, well, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't care as long as Jesus is in there. He is the, he is the chain breaker. He is the, the savior of the world. He is the deliverer. He is, he's our everything. And so I just, I know you, you all, especially those of you on this morning prayer call, but you know, we get a lot of new believers on here. We get a lot of people from different nations who don't have the same teachings that we do. Maybe they've come out of uh, different kinds of teachings. If you're going to name drop, drop the name of Jesus. <laughs> if you're going to name drop, we see so much name dropping in the body of Christ. Oh, well, you know, I had lunch with this one and I preached at this church and I, you know, that's a whole nother topic. But if you're going to not, if you're going to do some name dropping, don't leave Jesus out of it. Amen. If you're going to pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Let's do that now. I want to remind you, you can get all the equipping that you need at school of the spirit.tv. We have writers programs, prophetic programs, spiritual warfare programs, seer school, prayer programs. It's all there for you 
at schoolofthespirit.tv. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to keep you at the center of our focus. Help us not to neglect praying in your name. There is power, as the song says, in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Lord, I, I command every chain around your people to fall now in the name of Jesus. I command a complacency. I just heard complacency to fall. <laughs> Somebody doesn't like that, but in the name of Jesus, I break complacency. I break a discouragement in the name of Jesus. I break that depression off you in the name of Jesus. I break this cycle of frustration. I interrupt it with the name of Jesus. I command healing in your body in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the name above all names and that you've given us the privilege of taking your name, of using your name. You have authorized us to use your name. And we're so grateful, God, that we can take your name. You are our bridegroom. We are the bride. We've taken your name. We've taken the name of Jesus. Lord, bring us into closer and closer relationship and fellowship with you that we would really understand what that name means. And the power of the name. Help us to see prayer answers, even things, little things that we've prayed. Help us to be mindful, to notice, and to thank you for the answers to prayer that we've prayed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can find me online 